Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing a community suggestion for a stone cutter and it's a multi-block structure so it ties in with the multi-block structure series quite a bit. If you haven't watched that I did do a video not too long ago explaining the methods or you know an overview of what a multi-block structure is. I'm going to get more in depth into that in the short future, but I'll add, make sure to add this to that particular playlist as it is still relevant to it. Now, with the stone cutter, I can't really open up the inventory for the vanilla stone cutter. Uh, that would be a really nice feature to actually have, being able to open up the different inventories for some blocks. But uh, I ended up having to create my own, which is exactly what I did. So if we place down the block, it's composed of five different types of blocks. We have the parts up here, which are unbreakable. And then we have the bottom block, which is the main block of the source, which we can basically ro rotate and place around and stuff like that. The base actually has the inventory for the entire block, but you can also right click on every other block in this particular model or structure, microstructure, and it will automatically uh, bring you to the inventory down here. Now, another thing that is handy is it will not place if there is a block in the way. For example, if we were to do this, it will just drop the block because there is something obstructing the area. So it makes sure that it doesn't override other existing blocks as well. Another thing that you might have noticed was the inventory is a little bit different than a regular stone cutter, and that's because the uh, lack of support for actually making it exactly the same. But we can actually create something very similar to a custom crafting system like a furnace, but for multi-slots, obviously. And uh, this little gap right here is actually comes into play quite uh, efficiently. So on this side, we have slots for our resources. So we can put our stone in these ones here, and this will be where our resources go for converting things. And then over here for the pattern, what will happen when we actually add this is it will start placing the blocks from our resources onto the table and then it's going to convert it into our pattern and then it's going to put it into our resource and remove the block from there. So I have a couple different types of things programmed in for it to actually convert. I have smooth stones uh, blocks to actually test for a solid block and then I also have slabs that we can use. So if we place that in here it should just start working slowly and as you can see it's slowly converting the blocks into the inventory and it's stocking up from what we have. Uh, we can change this at any time and it will start converting it into the other type of block. So now we're crafting up some stone slabs and we can just remove the the type of resource from here and it will stop the production. So that's basically the gist of how it works. It's not too, too complicated. Uh, when you actually see the procedures and stuff, it might get a little bit overwhelming though. So let's hop into M Creator and I'll show you how it all works. Okay, so we have a few different models. So let's cover the resources first. I have the textures for the particular blocks here. Uh, there is a few different types of them, including the vanilla saw that I've adjusted. And then we also have the inventory texture for the um, actual GUI. Uh, we also have five different models. Now you can do this with just regular blocks too. That's possible, but uh, custom models are a little bit nicer. I'll make sure to provide the block bench models if you want to use the exact same models and just retexture them and stuff like that, then you can do so if you want to. And then we have to create the actual blocks themselves. So for the most part, it doesn't matter too much on the settings uh, on most of them. I have set the the pit box to a 0 0.01 for minimum 
or 0 0.001 and for the minimum coordinates and 0 0.999 for the maximum coordinates. It just fixes a um, shading glitch with custom models and M creator so that I've basically done that for each individual one. The thing needs to be on uh, cutout and the type of transparency, the has transparency parts needs to be enabled. I've also set up rotation for southwest, northeast, and I've selected the model for that particular version. So we're on Stonecutter Zero. This is our main model for our inventory as well. If we go over here uh, to the properties tab, we have the I have it under decorations. The the material is rock, and the block on block sound is. Uh, stone and then I have the hardness set to 3.5 which is the same as a um, stone cutter vanilla version so the same properties as that uh, I've just allowed it to drop itself and require at least a stone or I think it's a stone stone pickaxe to break it and then I have set the tick rate to 14 this just basically allows it to go a little bit slower than you know the default 10 ticks but you can set it to any number you want depending on how fast you want the animation speed for it to basically place and add the blocks so that's basically how this is controlled the block color on map is I set this to stone because it's right resembles stone quite a bit and for reaction to being pushed, I've blocked this. Uh, this is mainly because it is a multi-block structure and I don't want all the blocks to get misaligned because then it might pose a problem for actually breaking them. So it's important to basically block any piston pushing. And I've also set the AI path to blocked as well. Other than that, all the other settings are completely fine to customize. Uh, you do need to enable the inventory or allow inventory and MPT blocks. So this is basically a tile entity. And then I've set up the inventory. So when we right click on the block, it will open up the inventory that we haven't covered just yet. And the inventory size is seven for the same thing. I've also disabled the taking of blocks or taking of items from the slots 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the resource slots are 1, 2, and 3, and the pattern slot is 0. So after you've done that, go to energy and fluid, uh, fluid storage. This is basically just the default thing and nothing's enabled. And then under the triggers, I have one block added and an update tick. The update tick basically covers the crafting recipe for the inventory slot. We'll cover that in just a little bit. And when the block is added, we are basically just testing for the rotation. And we're going to basically test for if there's error in those particular slot slots where we're going to be placing the actual other parts of the block. Now this is done for every rotation. I'll get into that in a little bit. And for the update tick, it's just basically testing if the um, pattern slot is not error, and then it's going to run a timer to basically do the animation cycle. And then it's going to basically test for the type of animation or action that it's basically supposed to be doing. So one, two, or three, and those are the actions that it's gonna be basically performing. I'll cover that in just a second. So let's move on to the generation and this, it doesn't generate naturally, so we can just move on to the inventory itself. So the inventory, we have our slot zero for our pattern block. This is the default location for the pattern block and then we have our one two and three slots for our resources and four five and six for our output slots and uh, that's all that really needs to be known for that and then we can go into our other block which is our other models very similar settings we're 
having the hitbox just a fraction smaller so we fix that texturing glitch and then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it can be, rotate on the same axis southwest northeast and then what we're going to do is make sure the block model is the proper one so in our case we have this as block or stone cutter one and same properties we also want to make sure the same properties are set up for the same thing as the other block there's a few minor differences though we're not having this spawn in a creative uh, tab of the ent entry so basically it won't spawn in the creative inventory for the tabs or anything like that I've also set the creative pick item so it is our default item and I've disabled the drop it's also unbreakable so we don't want it to actually be broken and we want the harvest um, set to one you could probably disable this if you wanted to and that's fine moving on to advanced properties we want the tick rate to be one uh, we're going to set the block color on map to stone and we're going to do the same reaction to being pushed to block and for entity path node blocked as well same exact properties uh, we do not need a tile entity so you can just leave this disabled and no forge energy and there is only one particular procedure now this will vary depending on which um, version of the model that you're basically right clicking on so this is the on block right clicked for the stone cutter block number one there is one for two three and four and i think they're yeah two three and four so those are the di different ones and what this basically does is it just um, opens the inventory relative to the main stone cutter block that we're basically right clicking so when we right click on it it's testing for the direction and then it's going to know exactly where the main source tile entity is for this structure and then it's going to basically open it at that location based on where it is so we don't actually need a tile entity to do that because we already are we're basically passing it on to the main entity tile entity that we've basically set up the inventory for uh, fluid storage we oh, we've covered that that's right so generation there isn't anything else uh, for generation so it's very similar to the other ones you basically can just duplicate it and uh, the only difference is you have to set up the um, the right click action for opening the inventory a little bit differently and that's all coordinate based as you can see the coordinates were different compared to the first one we basically opened so that's basically the only difference so it's the same as the first model just a little bit different for the procedure and that's these procedures down here so we have our first one our second one and our third one and our fourth right click action then we have our when the stone cutter block is destroyed now this is basically a global variable and what we're doing is we're going to test for the, the main block and what we're doing here is we're going to test for the rotation after and then we're going to basically remove the block for those locations that are the um, secondary models the parts that make up the multi-structure that we've basically placed and we're just going to remove them normally without any particles or anything like that uh, based on the rotation so this is going to be run from our main source block the block that we basically placed down and for the other part the other four parts that make up our multi-block structure I've basically just cancelled out the block being broken and this basically prevents uh, people in creative mode from being able to destroy the block and uh, mess up the whole system so that's basically all this does is the section here basically cancels out the event and this part will remove the block if the block is broken for the main source part and then we have only two other procedures uh, the first one is the update tick now this is where all the 
actual functionality of the crafting and stuff happens. It's not too complicated when you actually break it up into parts. I'll minimize some of the stuff so it doesn't look so invasive. And we will start from the top section and work our way down. So let's start right up here. The first condition that we're basically doing is we're testing if there is our pattern slot. So our pattern slot is slot 0. And if our slot 0 is not equal to error, then what we're going to do is we're going to run everything inside this. So the first thing that happens is we're going to set block action, a and bt variable, equal to block action plus 1. So this is basically a simple timer that will count up a number of times. Now, if we look at the following condition after that, we're testing if it's the block action is equal to 1, 2, 3, and if it's 3, then what it's going to do is also reset the timer after 3 is run to 0, and then it will start this process all over again. So let's take a look at the first action. Now the first action is basically to cover the block placement of the item and I th think it removes the, yeah, it sets the rotation and also removes the one of the items from the inventory slots. So what we're doing here is we're breaking it up into three different parts. We're going to test for our three slots. Now we have three slots, so we have to do this for each individual one. That's why there's three of them. Uh, we're testing for slot one, slot two, and slot three. So this is basically the exact same thing for each individual slot. I'll be covering just slot one. So the first thing that we do is we're testing if the uh, slot one is not equal to error. So if it has some type of content in it, and then what we're going to do is test if the current block above the table itself where we're going to be placing the block is either air or cave air. So if the slot one, our first resource slot, is has some sort of block and there is a valid spot to basically place the block in that inventory slot, then we're going to basically run our condition. So what happens then is we're going to replace the block one block above, where just above our actual crafting table slot, and then we're going to convert the um, the actual slot from or convert the item in our inventory slot, so slot one, and then we're going to basically convert that into a block at the current location. So to do that, I will cover this because it's actually quite important. We'll go to, I think it's block, and if I recall, it's somewhere down here. So we're going to convert, and then there is a item, and then what we need to do is we're going to remove that, and then we're going to go back to block. We're going to get the slot, like so, and then we're going to set this to 1, and we need to use our replace. So we're going to replace, and then we're going to remove that block, and then we're going to basically place that in here. And what this will do is it will basically convert the item from our inventory slot into the block that is relevant to the block where we're basically placing. After which we're going to be setting the rotation of the block. So what I've done here is I basically set block rotation. If we scroll down, there is set block direction right here. And then I've removed the downside or the basically the side that we select the direction from. And then what I've done is I've gone to block properties and I've gotten the direction of our current block and I've offset the coordinates to the block that we've basically just placed. So what this will do is it will basically set this the block that we just placed as the same rotation as the block that is our main block of our multi-block structure with the inventory. After which it's just basically removing one item from the particular slot in the inventory for our resources. So that's basically all that part does. You can copy the procedure from the GitHub project. 
I'll make sure to link that in the description. So after which, after it's basically placed the block and removed it from the inventory, what it's going to do is move on to action two. And what action two will do is it will basically test for a condition. So if the block in the above the actual table is stone or whatever resource you want, then what it's going to do is also test if the pattern is a particular type. So in our case, we're testing if the block above the table is stone and the pattern is a stone stairs. If that's the case, then we're basically replacing the block into stone stairs and we're doing that for all our recipes. So I've basically set up three different types of recipes, slabs, smooth stone and stairs. And if you want to add a new recipe, then all you need to do is basically drop that down and set up your the block that you basically want to test for and the block you want to convert it into or the pattern block. And then the basically just replace it with the block that is the, your pattern block. So that's basically how that all works. So after it's basically replaced the block and crafted the resource, what it's going to do is move on to action three. And this is where it's going to convert it back into the inventory and remove the block. So this is basically what we're doing again is we're testing for our inventory slots and our basically our storage slots, slot four, slot five, and slot six. If the block equals to air, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically add it to that inventory. If it's not air, then what we want to do is basically test if the slot has the same resource in it and if it's under 64. So if it's under 64 or one stack, then we want to basically add it to that particular slot. So in our case, I'll be covering just the slot four. It's basically the exact same thing. So again, what we're doing is we're testing if our slot four is equal to air. This is optional, but if it's not equal to air, then we're going to test for something else. What we're gonna do is we're going to create a basic test to see if the current block that is placed on the stairs or the, the table itself is the same block as in slot four. And basically what I've done here is if we go into logic, grab a operator like this, I've basically gone to item procedures and then converted this. So gotten this converter. And what this will do is it'll test for a block form and put it into an item form. So all we need to do now is basically go to our block procedures get block at, and then we're going to test for the coordinate for where this block has basically been converted from. So we want to test for the block above where our um, crafting section is actually located. After which we just need to test for the slot for our particular um, resource, and that will be slot four, slot five, or slot six. So that's basically how that's all set up. So this basically tests if it's the same item as a block form. If the same block form that's basically placed is equal to the same item in the resource or resource slot. And then what we're doing is we're also testing if the count of, of items in the resource slot is equal to or pardon me, less than 64. So if it's 63 or less, and if that's true, then what we're doing is we're basically setting the inventory for that particular block, and we're going to convert the block form. So again, we're using this particular convert system, and we're just going to uh, set the amount So what we're going to basically do is we're going to get the amount of what's currently in that particular stack for slot four, and then we're going to add one, and that will basically be the amount that we basically set. And then what we're doing is we're converting the uh, actual physical form of the block in the world 
into a item and then we're going to basically put that into slot 4 and then all we need to do is we're going to remove the block at that location. So to break it down because I know that it looks a little bit different than what most blocks look like if we go to block and then we're going to go and scroll down until we see set and then we're going to remove set 1 and well actually we can still use that so we'll just backtrack and grab that. We're also going to remove this particular block right here. We don't need that. And then what we need to do is go to block and I think, no, pardon me, item, item and then convert. We're going to place that down here and then we're going to convert our get block. So the block above, so like so. And then what we need to do is we're going to set the, basically get the amount. So we need a math operator. We're going to place that here. We're going to go plus one. And then we're going to get the number of items. So that's basically how it's all set up here. And that's all that basically runs here for each individual slot. And then after it's just resetting the timer. So it's back to zero. So there is just one last procedure to basically look at and there is the one block added and when the block is added what we're doing is we're basically testing for the rotation and then what we're going to do is we're going to test if the conditions are met. So if the current block at the coordinates relative to where those blocks are being placed. So we're testing for if it's either uh, cave error or regular error. And then we're going to make sure that each individual coordinate for where we're placing the block is equal to uh, one of those particular blocks. So either cave error or error. If that's the case, then what we're doing is we're basically placing the relative blocks to those locations and we're not bothering with keeping the state or keeping the inventory because it doesn't really matter we're going to be setting the rotation down after anyways like so so that's basically what this part does is it basically just matches the direction of the rotation of our current block and it's going to set the block for one of these to basically match the same rotation if there isn't any cave error or error in the proper locations, then what it's going to do is just remove the block with the drop. And uh, that's for the current block that we're basically placing. So that does that for every rotation, as you can see here. And again, uh, you'll be able to get the resources, the procedure, the block bench models, as well as the M Creator workspace for this particular project on github i'll make sure to include the link down in the description so definitely check that out and i'll see you guys next time hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful and um yeah it was a fun little project to work on so i'll be moving on to some other multi-block structures and probably i think next week i'll be working on integrating or starting the next tutorial for the variable energy system so we'll be integrating probably solar panels next. So that will be interesting too. And we also have Friday's video coming up for the uh, M Creator Picket uh, voted for, which is the custom crops. So definitely tune in for that. Outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.